Hey everybody. So today what we're going to do is, I, we sometimes we get questions about our photo equipment. Um, you know, what kind of cameras we use and all that. So right now Jennifer is filming me with my cell phone camera. Because I guess honestly we use that one more than anything. Uh, that particular one is a Galaxy. And uh, what I'm going to do real quick is talk about this camera, which is our primary work camera um, and play camera. This is a Canon 70D. Um, and let me just give this disclaimer. I am not a photographer. I've never been to photography school. I think Jennifer took a photography class. But I've never done anything like that. Just watch stuff online, talk to people. I got a good friend, you know, friend from Greece that's an excellent photographer and so forth and just get advice and tips. But we work as insurance adjusters and a good insurance adjuster has to have photos, good photos. That's where, that's where you make your money, good pictures. I'm also uh, travel a lot. We live in our camper. Um, I used to work on cruise ships, possibly in the future work on cruise ships again. Uh, so, you know, we take a lot of pictures and this 70D, not the best Canon made, but is definitely awesome. And I'm not really going to do a review on this camera, just kind of tell you what we have. Uh, this is an, uh, a little bit more expensive than your Best Buy variety. The wind's blowing a little bit, so I don't know if that's coming through the mic. Um, but, you know, with these digital... I see that's how bad of a photographer I am. I don't even know what they're called, but do you? DSLR. DLSR. DSLR. Um, with these cameras, you know, you can get these like this. Uh, this is a Canon T3i. So you know this is kind of old. It's a T3i. This was the first one we ever bought uh, for Jennifer, I think, and we learned on that. And then we upgraded to this one, but we still keep this one as a backup because our lenses interchange. And these are both crop sensor DLS, DSLRs. And if you, the next camera I get, if I ever decide to, is going to be a full full frame. But these are crop. Which go Google that somewhere else if you want to learn about that. So anyway, this is my 70 uh, D. And before I put it on here, this is my Styx Pro 656 tripod. I've had this for over a couple years. It's wore out. It's time for a new one. So maybe soon here we're going to be up, you know, getting a newer tripod. Um, and I'll go ahead and tell you, I bought most of my equipment from B&H Photo. I have bought through Abe's before, but I very rarely ever buy at a local like retailer guy or something like that it's camera equipment you can go up to new york city to be an h photo or do it online and buy this stuff a lot cheaper through them and you know one one piece of equipment is just as good as another when you know retailer wise so don't pay those extra prices uh and go you know go to be an h photo or somebody like that so <laughs> jennifer will shut that off I'll set this one up and then we'll talk about everything and all, all this back here, all the different camera equipment I have. Hold on one second. Okay, so now I'm uh, recording on my EOS 70D, my Canon, which as I said a second ago is my primary camera that we use. I have a uh, 10 by 24 um, lens on there right now. It's not a fisheye lens, but if you do zoom it all the way out, it kind of gives you a, a big panoramic view um, and and on that like talking about lenses and all I said I'm not a photographer so you know I really don't even want to try discussing that because I'm no good at that and I'm looking at Jennifer every now and then because she knows more about this stuff than I do really but I'm just going to go through here real cheap even though this is uh, I start real real quick the cheap and easy way to do this I say cheap this is a lot of expensive equipment in here, but I'm cheap. I've said that before. I'm very cheap. If I can find a way to get something cheaper, I'm going to do it. So, as an example, this is a uh, Canon lens made in Japan. Seven, let's see. This is a 100 by 400 millimeter, uh, 1.4 to 5.56. You know, it has, uh, uh, you know, everything in there. This is really what you want, right? What do I use this for? 
Well, work-wise, sometimes when I'm on like a, a two-story roof and it's real steep, I can stand on the ground and I can, you know, zoom in onto the roof and I can see those damaged shingles and such. So that's why I justified this. Um, this new, this is an older model. So, and what they did is Canon came out with a new model of this. So all the old models that B&H Photo had, they sold for like half price. So I don't think I even paid a thousand dollars for this. Any ideas to remember, Jennifer? 900 maybe, 899? And no tax when you do it through the internet. A new one of these, especially the new model, is you know fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars or more. That's how you can save money, right? So I use this when I'm photographing roofs. If it's a dangerous roof that I can't get to, sometimes when I see like up in the eaves, I got rotted wood or something like that. I can get down on the ground and I can get up in there real close because that's what the insurance providers want: is a real close photo of rotted wood so they can deny your claim. If you ever got questions about how insurance companies deny your claims, shoot me and Jennifer an email and we'll tell you. <laughs> That's a side note. She's probably not going to like me saying that. So anyway, there's your Canon lens there. These are like stock lenses that came with the cameras. Uh, an 18 to 135. This is an 18 to 55. As I said a minute ago, here's my old T3i. We always keep this one in the case here as a backup. Speaking of the case, this is just a gun case that I picked up at a uh, Air Force Base exchange for like 50 bucks maybe. It wasn't even that, you know, you go, go out there and buy you an expensive camera case if you want. But look, I have everything in here. A lot of stuff in here. These are my favorite lenses right here. Again, don't kill me on this. I think these are called prime lenses. They don't, they don't focus or anything. This is a 40 millimeter, and this is a 24 millimeter, and this one's this one's my favorite favorite. Um, when you and when you're using a crop sensor, it actually changes it a little bit. So you know it. It's, so it's not a 24 millimeter; it's like a 32 millimeter or something. And anyway, again, that's too complicated. Um, when you put these on the camera, there is no zooming in and out. Uh, you got to get closer or further back, but. These things take amazing photos. Uh, some of my best photos that I've ever taken are with this lens right here, which I absolutely love. And this is only like 150 bucks. So, you know, you buy a 70D for $900 or so. I probably don't even make a 70D anymore, but um, you know, buy you a, a, a nice uh, DSLR for $800 to $1,200. And then you got this $150 lens right here and you're going to take photos with this that are going to blow your mind. I mean, seriously. Um, and the other thing about having this lens, I've got an ex extended hand grip on my 70D and on this T3i here. You know, this is the extended battery grip. These cost, you know, a hundred or so dollars to get these. But then when you go out there, you know, you can take pictures all day. We, we hardly ever charge this camera. The wind is really blowing the window, so you see how my little wind sucks. Um, and the, but the other great thing about this is when you have this lens on there and you're walking around and I've got like I've got this sling strap okay so I got this sling strap on and the camera's mounted right here to that it's on the tripod right now of course so it's slinging around and when this lens is on there it's not big and bulky as you know a big telephoto lens and to me I, I like you know, you got these guys now that take digital photography and they go in and they change the whole thing. They, they take raw format so they can go in and manipulate. I don't really like to do that. I like to try to capture the photo the way the photo is. So that's another reason why I really like this prime lens. My favorite, favorite lens. Of all this money here, this is my favorite one. $149. What else do we got here? Here's a speed light. This is a Canon 90EX. Came with the camera. I've never figured out how to make it work. You see what I'm saying? I'm not a photographer, okay? Costas, if you watch this video, please help me one day to make this thing work. One time I was on the ship and I saw some Japanese passengers and they had one of these on their camera. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. You know, what is that? And they talked to me about it. 50 bucks. You can get these on Amazon. This is called a Viltrox. L132T takes the same battery that the cameras take. 
Um, you can come back here and push this button and you can adjust the light color and, this, and how the sensitivity of the light, how bright it is and so forth. Did it change? Okay, because I was looking back here, not out there. Um, so 50 bucks for this. Now, what do we use this for? Uh, when you have a, a lens like this, or the one that's currently on the camera, on the camera, and you have a flash, sometimes you'll get a shadow in front of the camera. Well, that doesn't work in the insurance world, um, or just taking good pictures. You don't want that. This cam, this lens here, and it, it comes with a thing so you can mount it to the top of the camera, but I don't usually use that. What I usually do with this is I use this to fill a room. So when we're doing damage, you know, we're, take, we're documenting damage in a home, I'll go in the room and I'll, I'll with the room with this light and I'll hold it over here and I'll take the picture like this, you know. So I'm casting that light, filling that whole room with light for 50 bucks, okay. So that's pretty cool, right Jennifer? I love this, don't you? This is a great, a great one. for fit. Go look on Amazon, Viltrox. I'm going to tell you another great one that we use. It's this one right here. I bought this one at a flea market or something for 10 or 15 bucks it's uh, rechargeable probably can't see it I don't know if it's coming on or not but I mean this was like 15 bucks kind of the same effect as this light here you know we'll take this in and we'll flood a room with this uh, sometimes we go in houses that are very dark and we have to do that um, the other great thing about this one is I keep it in the camper so you know at night I can walk around with it or whatever it's a great great light I think it was 20 bucks. So, you know, why? Why are you spending $300, $300 on flashes and all this? I get awesome. Look, we get comments from desk adjusters and insurance companies all the time saying, wow, you guys provide some of the best pictures of any adjuster we have. Well, that's because most adjusters just use their cell phone or they just use one of these. And you're not going to get that amazing picture as you do with you know that kind of camera but while I'm on this this is a Sony uh, I've had this thing for so long cyber, uh, cyber shot I've had this camera for probably four years something like that long time I used to carry this on the ship with me um, I have two batteries for it uh, it records it takes it takes great photos y'all there ain't nothing wrong with the pictures this thing takes. But they're not, you know, I'm not going to get complicated like with, with the Canon 70D. With the Canon 70D, I'll take night photography and, it, you know, time lapse and so forth. But the cool thing about this camera is this is the case. I've had this case and this camera for three or four years. Probably four four years for sure. I've got an extra battery in there. I've got all the charging points in there. Put it on my belt. There we go. Another big wind just came through, so we'll see about the wind sock again that I made up. Uh, these are, you know, $100 or so. I don't know what I paid for it back then, but just these little cyber shots. They're great cameras for, for having and walking around with if you don't want to use your cell phone. On that same line as this one is this one. This is a Nikon. Coolpix W100. This one is impact resistant and water resistant. You can actually go swimming with it and so forth. Why do we have this one? Well, sometimes we have to go work in the rain. And if I got to climb on a roof or something like that, I'm not going to take my $1,200 camera and lens. You know, it's not happening. This one costs maybe 150 bucks. Uh, takes good enough photos to get the job done. I can get up on the roof in the rain, snap the pictures, snap the close-ups, and it's gonna, it'll work. I've taken this into um, some of the springs in Florida and videotaped. Um, you know, sometimes when we went out to the beach or something, I would take this so as to not, you know, damage my big expensive camera, of course. But while we're on the waterproof world, of course, we have the GoPro. This is a Hero 4. What can I say about the GoPro? Uh, <clears throat> well, the GoPro is pretty cool, but to me, it's not user friendly. Uh, you know, you've got to work work on getting it set up right, and 
watch. You got to pay attention, you know, and then when you get it working, there's no way to review it quickly to say, okay, it's doing what I wanted it to do because then you got to restart the whole process. So the GoPro is an awesome camera, takes awesome pictures, awesome video. I mean, shots that you're not going to get with any of these other cameras, you're going to get with the GoPro, but it's not user friendly, in my opinion. There will be people who will disagree with that, I'm sure. But Jennifer's never been able to figure this thing out. And it's very sensitive, and sometimes it just shut off. You know, it just restarts itself. And it's very aggravating. So that's the GoPro Hero 4, in my experience. Great camera, camera, but frustrating at the same time. Now, I could say the same thing about my Canon 70D. If you get a Canon 70D or anything higher than that, you better get the manual out and you know read it because there's a lot of settings in there that are complicated and they're simple things like right now is videotaping and if you don't go in and turn the manual focus or the autofocus off in the video you'll constantly hear kick 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 kick, kick, kick like this this noise you know of the autofocus continually focusing when you're videotaping it's very aggravating but you gotta experience it do it and then you say oh well this is how I fix that so in all of these cameras, you got to read the manual, but when you're dealing with a GoPro or a, an expensive Canon, you definitely got to. Here's another cool one I got. This is a Recon Force, a Browning Recon Force. This particular model is BTC 78FHD-PX. There's probably a quicker name for it than that. We paid well over a hundred dollars for it. I mean, I think it listed for like 150, but uh, you know, it we probably bought it on clearance or something. So, what do we use this for? We put this out in the woods and we do time lapse or motion photography to catch animals. Um, hold on one second while I pop this dog because she's eating fireworks from last night. Get out of that. <laughs> um, she got a stick in her mouth, Jennifer. So we, we photo, uh, do video surveillance on uh, animals and so forth out in the woods, sometimes when we stay in national parks. Some of the cool things we've caught on this is um, one time in Tennessee, we caught our neighbor's uh, chicken being carted off by a coyote. Coyote ran by and he had our neighbor's chicken in his mouth. That was pretty funny. There's another secret secret reason that we use this and nobody really watches these videos that much so I'll go ahead and tell you when you live in a camper like we do in some of the places we live sometimes we will put this she's got a she's got a piece of fireworks Jennifer sometimes we will put this out by the camera uh, camper as a surveillance camera in case somebody stole something from us now we've never had anybody steal anything from us but we have been in places where it was kind of shady so we put this out and then we would review the film each day or each night to see if anybody had been snooping around our camper when we weren't around. So if you live in a full-time camper like we do, this isn't a bad investment to have for $100 because you can strap it onto a tree somewhere and watch. Now, this is a cool toy that I have for work. This is my second one because the first one had crashed. It wasn't my fault, it was a hot dog and it just happened. This is a DJI Mavic Air. Right? Okay. Um, I haven't even taken the stickers off of this one. So uh, this is $1,000 if you buy this in the kit that comes with every so the first one I bought was a thousand dollars we were filming a boathouse taking pictures of a damaged boathouse in Florida the wind caused it to drift and hit the side of the building and it fell down into the water and ruined it I sent it to DJI they said the the drone is damaged beyond repair if you would like you can buy a new drone for five hundred and forty eight dollars through them uh, you know, so I did and this one has a service plan on it as well so I can't say enough about this other than my Canon this is my favorite camera however 
I don't think that, you know, like I'm going to fly this camera around and places where I think I might lose it again. It's just too expensive. Um, like if I'm up in the mountains or something, I think, oh, this would be a pretty cool vista. I'm not going to fly this around and, and take a chance on losing it. And also, this drone is illegal to fly in national parks, most national forest, state parks. Most places it is illegal to fly a drone if it's a national something. So keep that in mind. I did not even get this out of the box when we were in uh, Yellowstone. Uh, just didn't even take the chance. One more cool thing I got here. This is a new camera I have. Yeah, look at that. This is a camera. This is my... What do you call this, Jennifer? <laughs> Seeing if she was awake. This is my borescope. Right there. Mm -hmm. I'll post a picture. If you live in a camper or you do insurance adjusting like we do, this is a handy little tool to have. And this one's wireless. So what you do is you turn this on and it transmits a signal to my phone wirelessly through the internet or whatever. And then I open up the app on my phone and I can see out this borescope. And it takes video and stills. And it has a light that comes on. It even comes with hooks and so forth you can put on the end and you can hook things. So you can run this out behind the wall. Or you can run it in behind the wall of your camper or down your pipes or whatever you need to do inside your camper. You know how much this cost? Did I say yet, Jennifer? $35. Come on, for $35? This is probably the most handy tool I've got here. For, th for $35, I wish I had bought this a long, long time ago. Um, this is called a Depstech. D-E-P-S-T-E-C-H. Depstech. Okay? So go in there, Google yourself. for If you want one of these, and I'd highly recommend it. If you're a man... <laughs> If, if you should get one of these because this is a pretty cool tool. A depth deck bore scope for $35 on Amazon. So this video is probably 20 minutes long. I don't know. It's long. A lot longer than it should be. But I wanted to just take some time to talk about my camera stuff. Because it is how we make our money out here on the road. It is a lot of money. I mean, you know, $900 for a lens, $1,000 for a body. Right, this this one over here was a couple hundred dollars. I did not buy all these at one time. Definitely did not buy all this stuff at one time. This is an accumulation over four or five years at least. I think we've had this one for at least five years. So, you know, you're not, unless you got money to spend like that, you're not going to go out there and buy all this at one time. Nor do you need to. If you are well, getting into insurance work or, or getting into photography, you don't need all this. You know, if I had to just grab something out of here, I'd grab my 70D. Um, yeah, I'd probably grab that. I'd, I'd grab this borescope. If I if I said I was starting as a new guy, uh, I'd probably get me... I wouldn't get a 70D if I was just starting out in insurance adjusting. I'd get something more mid-level. Um, you don't need that, okay? I, but I, you definitely want a good camera and you want a borescope and you want a good drone and you got to get a good drone that does 4k video you can't get a 299 dollars drone and expect it to do what you need it to do all right so that's it send me any questions if you got them put any comments down below i have another youtube channel this one's going to go on my rv youtube channel but i have another youtube channel where i do reviews of sporting goods um which I may link at the end of this one. On that one, I some get sometimes get negative comments in the videos because people like to be funny. But uh, if you want to make a comment, you can. If not, don't worry about it. And I appreciate you watching, Jennifer. Appreciate you watching. You see what Jennifer's doing over there. <laughs> so that's what Jennifer's doing. She's hanging out. And listen, we appreciate y'all, and we talk to you later on. Bye bye.